I'm Indigo, and I'm feeling like getting into some spooky nostalgia. In honor of the month of October, I decided to film a new series. I will be talking about the original 62 Goosebumps books. When I was but a youth, I was deathly afraid of horror books, probably because I was a fairly sensitive child. I could barely look at the covers of these books because I would get so freaked out. It wasn't until my senior year of high school that I read my first horror book. It was Stephen King's Misery, and I would think that the Goosebumps books would be very tame in comparison. I had a thought several months ago that I wanted to overcome my childhood fears, so I read all 62 of the original books. I know there are other series that R.L. Stein wrote, and if you enjoy what I'm about to present to you over the next month, maybe I could do another series. Each video will contain three books and I will briefly summarize them. Here is your obligatory spoiler alert, but honestly, if you need one, you probably didn't want to read the books in the first place. The most recent book came out in 1997, so I would say the statute of limitations on the spoilers has passed. I would probably be giving some off-handed observations within the video, but I'm going to do my best to hold off on ranking them until the very end. I hope you are as excited as I am to dive into the series, so let's get started. Before I head into the first three books, I've compiled a list of tropes that R.L. Stein used for every book in order to engage his tween readers. These include a genius protagonist plus a sibling or two, a best buddy or a group of friends, a crazy parent who don't care about their kids and make very poor parenting choices, a bully or a non-believer, and a plot twist somewhere towards the end of the book, most likely on the last page. This is what I consider the official Goosebumps formula, so if my summaries become repetitive, here's that is why. Let us begin. The first book is called Welcome to Dead House. The main characters, Amanda and Josh, have recently moved into a weird house. The street they live on is filled with weird children. Spooky situations begin happening to them in the house, and every time they try to tell their parents what's going on, they dismiss the children as having wild imaginations. The family soon discovers that the entire town is actually made up of people who are living dead due to some sort of yellow haze that fell over the town. In the end, Amanda and Josh save their parents and race to the house to pack up and leave. It turns out that another family is moving in as they move out, but they don't have any time to explain the danger, so they just promptly leave. I'm cutting Mr. Stein some slack on this book because it was the first one. However, it was extremely dry and quite boring until the last 10 pages. As I wonder if a more brave 12-year-old me would read this, I would say I probably wouldn't have finished it because it was so boring. It was only slightly spooky. Our next book is Stay Out of the Basement. Now this is the book that should have been the opener. At first, I wasn't understanding why a shamed botanist would be growing plants in a basement, but I soon discovered that he was hiding a terrible secret. Casey and Margaret Brewer are repeatedly asked not to go down in the basement, but they're terribly concerned about their dad's well-being. They sneak down there to find that the plants are extraordinary. They breathe air. Not only that, but the thing posing as their father was actually a plant. They discovered this when he took his hat off. They raced down to the basement again to free their father from the closet he was locked in, and they conquer the dad plant together. Their dad sees the terrible consequences of messing with the natural order of things, and they decide to destroy all of the plants. The final twist at the end, literally on the last page, is that a plant in the garden nudges Margaret's ankle and asks for help, saying it's her real dad. It usually takes some genius writing for me to not guess the entire plot within the few, first few chapters of a book, so I commend Mr. Stein for all of the surprising plot twists. This book was genuinely spooky. And finally, we come to Monster Blood. This is the beginning of a mini-series within the original 62, as there is more than one Monster Blood book. Evan is very on edge and freaked out by little things. He meets a girl in his neighborhood named Andy, and they come across a weird store filled with weird stuff in it, including a can of Monster Blood. Once it's open, Evan quickly discovers that whatever was inside the can grows and eats things. 
It gets to a point where Andy and Evan try to figure out how to get rid of it, but Evan's dog Trigger ends up eating some of it. So now the dog is enormous. Then his aunt Catherine, who is babysitting while his parents are gone, discovers that he has monster blood. As the monster blood continues to get out of control, it is revealed that his aunt was fooled into making the monster blood and was cursed by some lady named Sarah Beth who wants to kill all children with monster blood for some reason. Trigger tackles Sarah Beth in a fit of excitement and she is eaten by the monster blood. The curse is broken, the blood shrinks as well as the dog, and they live happily ever after until they discover the can disappears. I think this is an odd concept for a story, but somehow it still works and I was very entertained. So this is spook approved. And there you have it, the first installment of our Goosebumps series. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and leave a comment about your favorite Goosebumps books. Thank you so very much for watching.